food your food. Yeah. And Nick writes, he's going to go to bed. Well, for people that don't. Well, it's slightly different. We, uh, we've been sidestepping each other for 18 months doing our various projects, Arcadia, Power Station, and we said there was a memo that went out saying all aboard is coming aboard May the 1st, and um, the three of us turned up. Roger, actually, we knew, wasn't going to be involved um, for reasons of health, and the fact that he became very disillusioned and bored with the music business. We knew he wasn't going to be involved, so, you know, luckily we were able to make um, that change up front, and we got Steve Ferroni in to perform on the album. And he was a slightly different uh, bag, to say the least. Um, he right. didn't. Uh, we had no idea whether he was going to be doing it or not. He kept telling us he was coming, and then he wouldn't. And, and we got, we get a letter from his lawyer, and the uh, whole thing went <coughs> on and on throughout the course of the album. We got very confused, actually, and um, it was... This, this whole sort of series of to and fro I mean, between him and us and him and us. And then, you know, right to find him up and he'd say one thing, like, I'm coming in two weeks' time. Then we get a lawyer from his, a letter from his lawyer the next day. Saying, saying he wasn't going to come Mr. at Taylor all. will be on the next flight as soon as $2 million are deposited in his Swiss bank account. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, the whole thing was crazy. And the thing was, as it went on through the summer, the three of us started to feel more confident in, in, yeah, in, in, in carrying song. carrying the thing on. Well, I mean, I think the three of us always had this with a spirit and soul of Duran Duran. And, um, you know, Andy was kind of like pretty disillusioned with the whole thing for like two years. And so that was like carrying around a bit of dead meat after you. And we're kind of a lot more streamlined now. I think. Well, it's quite ironic what happened, really, because um, we didn't even have time to think about, well, you know, are the three of us going to be able to write Duran Duran songs. It, it just sort of happened very naturally. I mean, John and I had got together in well, the end of April to just put a few ideas down really before Simon got back. And when he arrived back, we carried on working. And we got a couple of songs, and then we suddenly got like four songs by, by the beginning of June. And through June, we carried on writing. By the end of June, we really got the whole album. And this was before Andy had even sort of bothered saying, yeah, he was definitely coming over because he did finally come over in August whilst we were recording the album. Mm -hmm. And he actually played on about four of the tracks, which was really the cap on all of the work that he'd done with Duran Duran. And then he just told us that he wanted to go off and pursue a solo career. Um, we realised when we met him, he was miles apart from us. Uh, he just had a totally different attitude towards music and life in general. Now that Roger and Andy have left, I think Simon, you know, he came back off the boat and, and like it was a bit of a shock that Andy wasn't around. It wasn't a shock to me at all. I didn't expect him to be there, but I think we kind of did a lot of worrying as to whether we could, you know, between the three of us, you know, do, play songs, you know, make, make the songs as strong as, as what it, how they were before, you know, and deliver the same kind of goods. And, you know, we kind of do a bit of working and do a lot of worrying, do a bit more writing and a lot more worrying. And okay. This kind of went on for about three months and then we suddenly thought, hey, we've got this done. Mm. Right. I think the first thing that you notice about listening to the album is the fact that it's more streamlined. That well, was the thing at the end of the day. I mean, we didn't realize at the time, but because there was only three of us, we were actually writing quicker than we ever had before, and... The musical more parts became more... There was much more easier. interplay, oh, you yeah. know, we, the, because we'd be sitting around in the studio. We were lucky. I mean, Niall arrived uh, in August, but for the months prior to that, we'd be sitting around in the studio, the three of us, and we'd have, you know, we had keyboards, guitars, and basses, and drum machines, and, and Steve Ferroni, too. And so we'd, like, literally be bouncing around, saying, well, you know, you put something down, and I'd pick up a bass, and I'd da 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 Let's try a bit of guitar. We kind of covered up for, you know, we had to grow in order to, to cover up for what we were lacking in. Mm. And it just, what happened was that the musical parts on the record became a lot more em empathical, can you say that? I mean, it was all, everything fitted a lot better because they were all coming from the same same brains. You know, when, when we make a record before, I think everybody's yeah, performances were a lot more independent. You know, I would be thinking about bass 90% and everybody else's part. 10%, and I think probably the same would be for all of us, yeah. you know. And it was really a, a total group effort. It was like this mesh of sound that we were working towards. So consequently, we made less sounds. We were much more economic with what we did. And I think everything works, gels much better together. 
More from Duran coming up. The last cut. The very last thing we worked on. Yeah, we were in Interesting, the studio. that became the title of the album. Well, it was the title we'd oh. been knocking around for a while. I mean, I, a, yeah. I got phoned up while I was in the middle of the boat race, I think, or somewhere. Oh, Michael Barrow called you, didn't he? He said they want to call Somebody it. They want to call it Notorious. And I really didn't like terrible it. Terrible idea. It was, it was a terrible idea, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I really didn't like it at first. I thought this, you know, hang on, that's a bit, that, that really is presumptuous to call yourselves Notorious. And this was my one, my one, um, for me, was the main sort of qualification, was that it had to be clear that we weren't saying, we think we're notorious. And I think that was something that they automatically thought anyway. Yeah, we would just yeah. said, no, no, it's the album that's notorious. Yeah. It's the album that is infamous. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's true. It's, it's the, it's, it's really the on off, will they make it, will they make will they not, will they, won't they? And that, that seemed to be because people were talking about it and people in London were actually laying bets on whether we'd finish it, or, you know, whether we'd make it or not. And, you know, they were saying, oh, I wonder what it's like in their studio, you know. It's funny because the, the first day that John and I got together, we decided on the time, I was notorious as a working thing. We said, well, I hope Simon likes it because it really would be good for the album. And, you know, we like to name things. Uh, that you predicted your audience would be different. What do you mean by that? I, th I think the audience is, is going to be different. I mean, when I say audience, I think I, th I had in my mind the people who actually come and see the live show. Um, and that is an audience. But, but also the people who buy the records and listen to the music. It's bound to be different. It's been from the last Duran album. Yeah, sure, Ben, you bet it is. It's three years different. Those kids have grown up. They still like us. Um, maybe this, this, this record can cut through and... and to some, some different kind of listeners as well. I mean, it's funky, it's quite black sounding. You know, there's that to take into consideration. If we can keep adding on young ones as well, to give us that, to get that spark happening in the live show, I'll be very happy, but I'm sure it's going to be a different audience. Simon and Nick, uh, you're married. Uh, John, are you? No. Any plans to be married? No. How is marriage lifestyle, Simon and Nick? Good. <laughs> Has it affected uh, uh, your lifestyle at all, very drastically? It's still the same old guy as it used to be. Good old boy. Good old, it's still the same. All right, uh, Nick, I understand you just bought a mansion in London. A mansion? A mansion. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got a house in London. I wish it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't want to So you just bought a house? You want a definition uh, of mansion? Where is it? It's uh, in London. Okay. Any particular area? This <laughs> oh, you mean no the address? Well, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> phone number. You want that as well? I can give that to you too. <laughs> Dig a bit it's further. We'll get there in the end. <laughs> England and Scotland and Ireland, and then we're going to be opening in North America. How about Canadian dates? Toronto and what else? We're we doing six or seven cities. Toronto. Yeah. This will be the most you've seen of Canada then, It'll be as the far as touring. Yeah, it'll be the whole world. yeah, we won't be playing anywhere we've never played before, but yeah. it is the biggest yeah. tour we've ever done. It's going to be a bit of everything that we've done up until, up until now. Now, who's going with you? Uh, the the, the same band is going to be um, the three of us, together with Steve Peroni on drums, who did play on the whole album, um, Warren Cucurillo on guitar, who's ex-missing persons, Frank Zappa, and he also played on a few tracks on the album, together with a three-piece brass section and three-voice vocal section. Yeah. Trio BBs. Trio BBs. Got one. The English critics, and they have absolutely no respect whatsoever for us, so, you know, fair is fair. It's a pretty good relationship. And as far as we're concerned, and we, we, as far as we're yeah, concerned, we're in a slightly <laughs> advantageous position because we don't need them, but they certainly need us. So they scatter for a minute, too, and, and it's because it came to mind, the Arcadia Project. Splinter Project, the offspring. Would that happen again with Duran Duran, do you think? Could you see another... Uh... No, no, not at the moment. Not yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, I, I really feel the same way now as I did when we did our first album. And if you'd have asked us then, we'd have said, no way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it took us maybe four years, four and a half years later, we, we kind of fancied doing something different. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, that's the only thing. Not for a long, long time, anyway. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. We've, we've tried, you know, we've realized we make the best music in each other's company. Mm. The starting over, I keep getting that in my mind. It's a starting over in every sense of the word, then. Are you just as excited as you were uh, with Notorious as you were going in for your debut Duran Duran album? More, more ready, yeah. more to achieve, more to hold on to. 
I think we didn't we didn't know. I don't know. We feel I think we we we're a little bit more experienced now. We've got a little bit of expertise, you know, working in the back of our brains, and it's a and because of that, we want to use it. You know, all the things that I've learned during the last five years, <coughs> I actually want to put into practice now, where I've never had a chance to before. Yeah, it's quite nice going around <coughs> quietly blowing people's minds. You know, because they, they they still expect us to be. I don't know for some reason we're still treated as a. I mean, we must. I don't know. We're still looked upon as a young kind of young pop group and we're a little bit older and we've worked with some pretty heavy duty people now i think we're a lot smarter than people realize and it's quite nice we're real dogs you know we can real have we can, dogs we can get away with, we can get away with murder at the moment it's quite nice fun are we taking full advantage of that yes, yes we, we do take advantage <laughs> and what that's a difficult one um i've gone off simply there you were a fan of Simply Red for? Mm. I was. I just started. Okay, I, I listened to a couple of more of Paul Young. Yeah. Also mm. good value. Uh, Billy Idol. He's, getting, he's becoming more in New York than yeah. Steve Winwood. Mm. Steve Winwood and Peter Gabriel. Mm. Peter Gabriel. Yeah. I mean, actually, there's a lot of... I, I, I kind of like... I, I, my favourites are generally English artists that have become very Americanized, like Robert Palmer mm -hmm. and Steve Winwood. And, uh, I don't... I, I, I don't the actually English, like what happens. Yeah, the I don't like what happens to English people when they spend too much time in England. Yeah, the, English, English the Englishman abroad is definitely a lot easier to get on with. I think yeah. that's what we would, you know, which, well, I suppose that's what we are really, isn't it? And we do spend more time on Yeah, that. because I think it, you can, it, there's something that, that is within the English character that, that is very strong when it's, when it's outside of England, when it's in England. But independence. Yeah, well, England is a very... Uh, but it, inside England, it's all caught up and all, it's, it's just very hung up but national personality at the moment. Mm -hmm. it, and it, 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 the personality, it's a lot easier to come, uh, come out. Um, it's very stifling in England at the moment, actually. I mean, Most you, people are, yeah. I mean, everybody from ourselves to you two, to Simple Minds, to, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, so many uh, these bands actually are more successful outside of England. Though. I think you've got to, yeah, sorry, I don't think so. What? You don't think they're more successful outside? No, I just just thinking Simple Minds and um, and uh, when you two are not English acts. Well, at all. Sure. Um, <laughs> you well, not, not even that. Ireland, well, Irish, Irish is not well. English or UK. It's, <laughs> it's, it's different. Why <laughs> charge you a line? Oh, what right. are they, What are they singing? French? French. Uh, John and I started working on one day. We wanted to do something that's kind of a bit more mid-paced but really solid groove. And we worked on it, just John and I, with a Lindra. Um, we, got, we got this kind of chord progression we liked, and John got a great bass line for us. It's actually my favourite bass line I've ever written. Yeah. And um, we thought, wow, this, this sounds really good. It's so simple. Um, let's just leave it like that and see what Simon thinks of it. Simon and he didn't arrived. think very much of it for a we long time. We played all the tracks. Uh, <laughs> all the ones we thought he didn't like, he, you know, he liked. <clears> all the ones we thought were going to be pretty obvious, he kind of went, oh, uh, not sure about that one. Skin track. Well, that's well, a magical <clears> thing, yeah. because even Niall, you know, even at the point, I mean, I, I remember, like, talking to Niall, you know, we'd be saying, what's the matter with Simon, you know? I mean, Simon, you know, still hadn't got his head round it, and, and we were going, well, he'll get it because we, it's, 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 it's the best thing on the album. We were, I thought it was the best thing on the album before he'd even put a word on it. And then when he put the words on it, it was like, I mean, I was, it was, I don't know, it was the most, we said, I think the day that he put the vocal on that, we said, this is it, we have ourselves the album we wanted. It was, you know, we've got, we've got a few songs, but I feel it's, it's the oh, closest you know, I, we've, we've, we've come to. It was a funny because it was more to it than that. It wasn't just that. It wasn't like you knew exactly it, that it was that it was this great song I and mean, you were a little bit confused about it because I remember I when you first confused about it at when all. you first came you said you said you, said, you, said you wanted it to sound like come up to the bumper pull up to the bumper no. yes absolutely no. it was it nothing don't no it doesn't sound like that now no. it doesn't no, but no, that's the what, backing you see and, and I think you know a great deal of confusion which came from came from you from from, from, from what yeah, you said it should be right. like you did it <laughs> no you said you it was absolutely it was, not yeah backing track you can't not change that. From day one. I don't think the backing track hasn't changed at no, all but it was this kind of approach the democratic thing. Duran process in motion yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> but anyway it seemed we easier great arguments uh, interest. Head. head. Before it was head. Didn't have one. I'll tell you about it after the interview. <laughs> American Science had a working title of skin trade. That's right. Uh, yeah, I know what it was. I know what it was. <laughs>